Excuse me, Teddy. Uh, Teddy, this is my channel. You're really just gonna groom yourself? That's for your OnlyFans account. <laughs> Teddy, that's not your show. <laughs> Grab your coffee, ladies and gentlemen, because you're gonna need it. But this one's mine, okay? Don't ask. What is going on guys? My name is Sarah and I hope you are all having a fantastic day and I hope you're getting excited because it's new desk day. Yay! Not to be confused with new bike day. I love new bike day. You love new bike day. Everyone loves new bike day. Aw, I miss new bike day. I wish it was new bike day. But alas, it's not new bike day. It's new desk day. And me and you and Teddy, wherever he went, that famous man he is, and our friend Big Bird here. What's going on, Big Bird? We're gonna set up my new trainer desk. I bought the Rad Indoor Trainer slash Standing slash whatever desk, I will link it down below, to set up, to refresh my indoor trainer setup as the outdoor weather is getting a little bit poopy and wet these days, and it looks more and more like the majority of my rides are going to be relegated indoors. It is what it is, but I wanted to refresh my setup a, a little bit with this new trainer desk. I'm gonna unbox it right here. I'm gonna give you some feedback on the setup of the desk. I'm gonna give you some feedback as to my at least initial thoughts and impressions of the quality once I have it in hand. Uh, so I will drag that in momentarily, but let me give you the story behind the desk. Are you ready, Big Bird? Are you ready? He's ready. All right, Big Bird, you wait over here until we set up the desk, okay? Yeah, I'm weird. Deal with it. So I wanted to buy a new desk this year. Actually, I wanted to buy a desk early this year, but the reason why, if you watched my last uh, trainer setup video, which was probably like eight or nine months ago, something like that, you'll, you'll see that I had this kind of makeshift, I repurposed a riser table to make into a trainer desk, just recycling, you know, not trying to waste something that uh, I could repurpose from something else. Uh, and it worked really well. I, it fit my keyboard, I could put some remotes on here, maybe a couple of extra water bottles, I could fit some nutrition, some other bits and bobs, and it seemed to work really well for just basic use. It was the perfect height to slide right over the top wheel with the riser attached. So it did its job. It functioned really well. I could reach the keyboard. I could do all of the basic things that I would want to do with a trainer desk. But I wanted to kind of expound, expound upon uh, my utilization of the desk. One of the things I wanted to be able to do is for the long endurance rides where I might not be doing structure or intervals, I wanted to be able to put up some, maybe some courses on the TV, watch them and be able to take some notes. So that would involve maybe setting up a tablet or a laptop on the desk and being able to kind of type some notes in between and then maybe push the desk out of the way. This desk was a little bit short for that as it kind of lined up right under the handlebars and the reach to the keyboard was a little bit awkward. It worked for basic riding, but it was not gonna work for more substantive use. Uh, the other thing is it's a little bit small for that to set up a laptop, even like something like a 15 inch laptop. It would take up a little bit of space on here and then it would block off your ability to set other things on the table. Moreover, I took the crossbar off the bottom to accommodate the riser so it would just slide underneath and you can see it's not the most stable thing in the world. So as you add more weight uh, and top load this thing, it just wouldn't be perfect. So at the beginning of the year, I decided I wanted to upgrade the trainer desk, but why am I still sitting with this thing? Well, it's because the trainer desk that I really wanted was out of stock. For months, this thing was out of stock. I was not able to get my hands on it. I kept checking until spring gave way to summer and outdoor riding season began and it just kind of fell out of the forefront of my brain and I just let it go. But now that the weather's getting a little bit poopy and wet out and riding outside is not going to be as safe or as I don't know, plausible, if you will. Uh, I wanted to kind of revisit the idea, and lo and behold, the desk was in stock. It just showed up about an hour ago. It's out in the hallway. It's waiting for me to drag it up these stairs and set it up so I can give you the setup feedback and my initial thoughts and impressions so that you guys, if you're thinking about this desk, might be able to make a decision. So let's talk a little bit about the desk itself. This is the Rad. I don't remember if it's called the standing desk or trainer desk or both. I will link it down in the show notes below. I got it on Amazon with free prime shipping. It came within 36 hours. 
Uh, I think I paid $120 for it, just as a matter of disclosure. Nobody's paying me to make this review. This was something I paid for with my own money. I'm not nearly cool enough to review for any kind of sponsorship or brand deal, but I just wanted to get that out of the way, just in case you're not familiar with my channel. This is just my own unbiased opinion, and you're gonna get my immediate response as I set this thing up right here in my living room. So at any rate, why did I pick out this particular desk? Well, in truth, this desk is really just a Wahoo desk, more or less knockoff. Now, typically when it comes to cycling equipment, I don't go for knockoffs or generics or imitation products because I found with some of the hobbies that I have, cycling, photography, when you cheap out on some of these things, you end up paying more in the long run because you're gonna have to upgrade eventually. You're not gonna be happy with the quality. It's not gonna perform. You're gonna lose more in time than, than the value for the money that you could have spent on it. But in this particular case, I did a lot of research on this desk and the quality was, was definitely spot on. It was a good quality product, really good feedback, really solid materials, and it had some extra features that the Wahoo desk didn't have. Now, some of this you can chalk up to a bit of the Wahoo tax, if you will. I like to compare Wahoo to Apple in a lot of ways. They make some really great products, really awesome styling, rock solid, but there's a little bit of, they position themselves in the market as a premium brand, and as such, you're paying a bit of a markup. And that markup, it became really obvious on something like their desk. At $250 for some plastic and metal on wheels, more or less, that's a really tough sell for a lot of people. Now, granted, we're cyclists and endurance athletes. We spend a lot of money on our gear, but it was this is a table. This is a table. On principle, I was not gonna spend $250 on a table. I mean, had it maybe had some uh, electronic uh, cable managed or routing uh, for your peripherals, something where you can plug it in, keep it out of the way, remove the trip hazards, it might be an easier sell. But for the basic desk for $250, there was just no way I was gonna do that. It just wasn't worth it. And I could have gotten my hands on it. It was just a principal thing. I would have rather used this janky desk that I started, uh, that I made, rather than uh, trying to pay $250. If I'm gonna pay the Wahoo premium on something, I'm gonna do it for something to use more often, whether it's one of their head units, their trainer, but I'm not gonna do it on a desk. It's a desk. I wanna be able to tuck it out of the way and ignore it 90% of the time, and I might only get really substantive use out of it six months out of the year, maybe. I try to get as much outdoor riding as I can while it's available to us. But at any rate, that was that's enough of my rationalizing as to why I didn't buy the Wahoo desk. Saris also offers a trainer desk. It is, it has the internal cable routing and a nice power strip, which is a really nice touch. I'd love to see that integrated into a different trainer desk, but the layout and the design, they just, it's just a miss. I like Saris. I like a lot of their products. I think they provide a lot of value for the dollar on a lot of their products, but they price this desk at $329, this wood platform desk on some really nice, strong, solid um, legs, but no wheels. And probably about the size of this, maybe a little bit wider. I was so disappointed when I saw this desk and the price point, it was just a miss for me. So. I was definitely committed to buying this rad trainer desk because of A, the features and quality that it had, and B, because on principle, 120 bucks, that was worth it to me. $120 is still a lot of money. I mean, compared to some of the other things that we spend our money on as cyclists, maybe not that much, but $120 for most of us isn't just throwaway money either. So uh, I really thought hard about it and I did my research back early in the year and I was happy to find now that things are getting a little bit less amenable to my outdoor riding, that uh, I, it was back in stock. I got my hands on it as soon as I saw it and I am going to unbox it for you today. So that's enough of me running my mouth. That's the background. I will link some of the, the things I talked about. I'll link the Saris and the Wahoo down below too. If you want to check them out, I'm not trying to discourage you from going in that direction. Just trying to quantify uh, the reasons why I went with this desk in particular. So let me go out and grab it and uh, tell you what I think. <laughs>
All right, ladies and germs, we have a finished product. 15 minutes of assembly later, we have new desk day complete. This was a very simple and easy assembly process. I really can't complain. So intuitive, really don't need the instructions for it as long as you put the legs in the right angle, which can be uh, reaffirmed by just taking a quick glance at the picture. Otherwise, you really, this is, this is so easy, a child can put this thing together. So the base comes, two legs, and this platform come and three casters and those come in separate pieces. It comes with four bolts. It comes actually with the tools that you need. I had Mr. Big Bird here. He was ready with the toolbox to hand me the tools that I might need to put this thing together. And his services were not required. I'm sorry, Big Bird. I know you really wanted to participate today, but I'm gonna put you back over here. But all of those items basically come very simple. The uh, three casters, you have one caster that's a, a different height. That one obviously goes in the back of the platform and the two matching ones would be paired off in the front. Seems pretty intuitive to me. The two legs have four uh, sets of long bolts with nuts and you put them through the uh, base of the platform and you fasten those as long as you install them right in the correct angle and not facing the other way. You're pretty much good to go there. You have two bolts that were already here uh, recessed into the platform that bolt into these uh, telescoping legs. The only weirdness about installing this, and it was probably outlined in the instructions that I chose not to read, was that you need to make sure these legs uh, ship in the recessed position, so obviously they don't get damaged, but you have to uh, expend, extend the telescoping leg to install this properly. If you try to install this platform with the leg all the way down, it actually doesn't bottom out and these buttons to adjust the platform height end up uh, being way too deep inside of the platform. So you need to make sure if you're gonna put this together, extend these telescoping legs at least one stop so that you can push this all the way down. And then you put the bolt in. And the other weird thing about that is that the bolt actually doesn't have its own recess in the legs. So it doesn't nest into anything. You're literally just cinching this down against the leg. I think that's an odd design decision. Now perhaps there's some intentionality there to maybe allow you a little flexibility to micro adjust the angle of the platform. Or perhaps it's just a cost saving measure from a manufacturing perspective. I don't really know the answer to that. Me personally, I'd much prefer to see some kind of hole in here for this bolt to nest in uh, just for some security purposes. Maybe over time this would back out. So periodically maybe check those bolts. I haven't heard anything about these loosening up and gravity should keep this down, but it just thought it was a little bit weird to not actually have that bolt go into a hole in this leg. Otherwise, I, I think that it, it's great. I think the quality at face value is is nice. I think the aluminum base, uh, it's fine. It's black. It's nice looking, but it's stable. It's good quality. It doesn't look like it's something that's going to get beaten up or uh, damaged or bent by any means. So I'm happy with that. Some nice little embellishments with the blue. The blue looks nice. Uh, the top, the ABS plastic, it's a little bit on the thin side, but considering the cost, I think it's about what I would have expected. Uh, it probably will scratch up like any other ABS plastic if you're using something really sharp or rigid against it, but I think it'll hold up to most people's normal use with no issue. The rubber on the top, the grip rubber to keep things from sliding around or uh, sliding off, uh, it's really good. You obviously can still move things, but um, it'll keep things from really migrating with a little bit of vibration if this happens to be against the bike or something that might vibrate. Uh, in terms of the layout of the top of, of the platform here, it's nice. You've got two of these uh, recesses for phones or tablets or what have you. Uh, my phone with the case on does fit. It's a little finicky and a little tight. You got to kind of put it in just the right spot because the case makes it a little thick. But if I move it just a couple inches this way, it fits right in. Uh, the angle is a little bit upright, but that's okay. Uh, fits the keyboard, puts some nutrition. I can put some uh, remotes on here. You have two cup holders that look a little shallow, um, but they do work. Like if I, if I shake this, this isn't going anywhere. If I give it a real solid hit, it's really not going anywhere. If you get it from the side, it'll probably fall out, but I'm not sure who's hitting their, their table that hard. So I think they work, but I would have liked to see this a little bit deeper, but that's just splitting hairs. I've got the tablet in the back. I can also put it in the front. That fits really nicely. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, you've got the two buttons on the top here. You just stick your thumbs inside those buttons and you can lower the platform. Now, in terms of raising the platform, this is probably my biggest function complaint here. If I try to do this, I'm picking up the whole desk. So it's not something you're gonna really be able to do on the fly while you're on the bike. You gotta kind of secure the base with like your foot 
and then you can really adjust it. I don't think most people are adjusting the height as they go, but just be cognizant of that. Perhaps a user could come up with some sort of solution, maybe some kind of lubricant on these telescoping legs to solve that uh, problem, but I, I don't see it as a huge issue or a huge deal breaker for this unit. You just need to be cognizant. The worst thing that's gonna happen is that you're just gonna get too much resistance when you try to pull that up. So uh, I like the adjustability in the height. It gives it a lot of flexibility for whatever you need to use. If you wanna put it on a riser, uh, your front wheel on a riser, I think that will work great. Otherwise, it's pretty simple. You know, I like this rubberized base here. It's a nice touch, you know, instead of sliding off, it kind of sticks and, and doesn't go sliding across like maybe my other table would have with just the very uh, wood, the slick surface. So uh, great job with that. It does have locking wheels. That is something that the Wahoo desk does not have. So, you know, this, this is a good option. I've got them locked right now. It'll move a little bit if you give it a good push. You can hear it dragging. The wheels are definitely locked. If I unlock them, like so, it moves real freely. And if you have an even surface, you could probably leave it like this so that you can adjust it as you go. Um, but if you're a little worried that it's gonna roll away from you, just give it a good lock. And it's definitely not gonna roll off on its own. Um, you'd have to really give it a solid push to get it to roll away. Uh, you have some handles here, I guess. Uh, I think this is intended for towels or something to that effect. It's kind of in an awkward location. Maybe it's a good place to maybe feed some cables through or hang something else. Um, but they're there. It's just like an, an extra touch for whatever you want to use it. That's fine. I don't see myself getting much use out of that. I'd probably use that more literally as a handle to pull this uh, out of the way or, or stow it away somewhere. But that's it. That's, that's really it. In terms of quality, I'd give this probably an 8 out of 10. The assembly process, a 9 out of 10. Of value, I would give this probably a 10 out of 10. I think for the $120, this is is. You, you're getting what you pay for, you're getting a decent quality, I think you're getting a good value. Um, and if you ride on the indoor trainer a lot, I, I can definitely recommend this desk if you're looking for something with these particular features. And that's pretty much all I've got for you guys. I hope I've answered any questions that you may have had about this particular desk. If I haven't, please go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them. If you have a second and you saw value in this video, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Doing that and subscribing really does help the channel out quite a bit. It gets these videos out in front of other people who may see some value in it. So uh, I'd like it if you can go ahead and you can do that for Big Bird. Big Bird really wants you to like and subscribe. If not, whack the thumbs down button or just leave this video. Don't throw anything at the screen because it's your device. You really don't want to break your stuff. And I'm sure shit not gonna let you break my stuff. But in any event, thank you guys as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you guys for making it all the way to the end. Comments, questions, concerns, always welcome down there and I will catch you in the next one. See ya.